to the gentleman from Massachusetts, my colleague across the aisle, Congressman Keating, former prosecutor. Well, I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, and in an all too common occurrence in this nation today, uh, the Murphy family in Wareham, Massachusetts is seeing flood insurance premiums rise dramatically from $500 an annually in their instance to 5,000, a 10 time uh, amount of an increase. Anthony Frangie, who is a realtor in the South Shore portion of Massachusetts, has seen multiple home sales fall through specifically because the flood insurance premiums were too high. This is a real estate industry, not just in my home state, but across the country, that has been reeling uh, as a result of the worst downturn in the housing industry in recent years that our country has ever experienced. They're beginning to come forward. Sales are occurring. Uh, one of our most important uh, industries, our housing industry, is beginning to drive our economy for you, forward. Yet this is going to drive us back. The lending institutions that support this in states like Florida, uh, where the inventory was so high, uh, where they had uh, houses that people walked away from because they couldn't afford and they couldn't sell themselves, now they have experienced improvement, but this is going to set them back. Uh, and it's going to hurt our economy in the process, not just regionally, but nationally. Last year, the owners of Haddad's Ocean Cafe and the community I represent of Marshfield renovated their, re uh, their restaurant to reflect the current flood requirements, and they went further. They even went higher uh, when they made these uh, kind of very expensive renovations, going above what was needed. Today, with the new flood maps, they must pay millions of dollars in additional renovations to further rise the, the building even higher or pay flood insurance premiums far in excess of $30,000 annually, something that endangers their ability to conduct basic business. These are just a few of the numerous examples and challenges facing homeowners and businesses that have arisen through the implementation of the new flood insurance changes. And uh, FEMA, at hearings that we've had uh, here uh, in answering uh, to this issue about the implementation, has said they perceive their job uh, to overestimate the impact of this. Clearly, there's something wrong uh, with the implementation uh, of this law. Our office has had individual after individual come forward to us uh, with things that affect their own uh, persons and their own homes looking for help. Uh, some of them that can afford it have moved forward with appeals. And many of those appeals have been successful. Yet they've had to invest and risk thousands of dollars in elevation studies in, in terms of site reviews just to bring their case forward. Communities have gone together and, and brought forth appeals for the entire community. One of those communities uh, in my district went forward and they were so detailed, I looked at what they said and decided to bring it to the attention uh, and to ask this, the advice and expertise of one of the nation's top uh, coastal expert groups, and that's the University of Massachusetts School of Marine Science and Technology in, in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. What they determined with their review was that the methodology used to determine these maps was faulty. In fact, one of the things they found was uh, the wave structure that results in flooding uh, that is the result of storm surges uh, and violent storms in the east and Atlantic coast and responsible for the floods. That wasn't used as the methodology to determine uh, what the impact would be on the maps and what the cost would be for flood insurance on all these homeowners. Indeed, they used the methodology based on the Pacific Ocean with a longer, slower wave structure and the scientists and coastal engineers that reviewed this for us said what they did determined to be the maps was based on faulty science. Now, individuals are facing enormous burdens, as my colleagues uh, have uh, so aptly demonstrated, uh, in terms of annual payments uh, that, that could be uh, uh, the difference between being able to stay in your own home, live in your own home, or not. Annual payments that uh, affect many people on fixed income who had never, ever budgeted for this 
and it's throwing them into the most difficult decisions of how they're going to heat their home, how they're going to afford to live, what they're going to do. Even uh, younger uh, people who are using or hoping to use the equity on their home to pay for their kids' college education are finding that instead of having this go towards uh, that important uh, goal in their life, it's going to pay for flood insurance. Now, this is a, an important thing, not only how it affects people in annual payments, but what this also does. This affects and can affect the entire value of their home. In fact, real estate people are finding as they're going to sell their homes that the homes that were valued one way are now uh, dramatically being reduced because of the cost of annual flood insurance attached to that home. So what we have it really is a taking as a result of the uh, implementation of this, a taking of people's assets, of their savings, of the roof over their head, of the number one financial asset they have in their lives. And clearly this is not the role of government to effectuate this kind of taking because maybe the map is totally wrong and they shouldn't be included at all, or maybe it's off just one foot. And it has this kind of devastating financial and personal impact. That's why I've joined uh, our colleagues uh, in being the original, one of the original sponsors of the Homeowner Flood Insurance Affordability Act. Now, this is done in a house that's often challenged in terms of working across the aisle, in terms of working in a, a bipartisan manner. But in this instance, it's a sterling example of how we have worked together uh, across the aisle in a common interest, realizing how important uh, this is to the people we represent, realizing how important this is to the real estate industry nationally, realizing how important this is to the lending uh, institutions nationally, and making sure that government isn't acting in a way that is actually seizing their personal assets and their life savings. We have an obligation, having worked together so hard, uh, and, I, and in my opinion, uh, achieving a very significant majority of the members of this House of Representatives to pass this kind of delay, to get it right, and make sure we're treating people fairly, that it is imperative that this bill be brought to the floor for a vote and be brought to the floor quickly for a vote. Uh, we are expecting Senate action in this just in the next few weeks. Uh, it is my hope, it is my plea, it is our obligation as the court of last resort representing these people who have so much uh, in jeopardy right now to bring it to the floor, to get a vote, to pass it, to get a delay, to be able to make sure we go to FEMA and say, you're dealing with people's livelihoods. You have an obligation to get it right and get it done. And when they do, this bill will also allow us here in Congress to review it and make sure the implementation is continued in the correct manner. So let's move forward on this very important issue as soon as possible. Let's show this as one more example during these very, very challenging times politically of what happens when the, this House listens to the people in their district and around the country, works together to get something done, and does the right thing. Uh, it is my fervent hope that we can do this quickly. Uh, with that, uh, I yield back my time.